Hi everybody, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com and in this video I'll be using the Rhino 7 work in progress to model a sync form using sub-Ds. So first off I've got the sub-D toolbar and the sub-D sidebar duplicated and docked off to the right hand side here just to make it easier to select things and I'm also working in small objects millimeters if you want to follow along. So I'll start with a sub-D box and uh, the sub-D box command, you can just type a number and enter. It'll change that X, Y, and Z count. I'm doing four by four by four, and I'll use the center option, center it at zero, and then um, 500, enter, 500, enter, 150, enter. And then ZEA to zoom extends all viewports. Now this is our soft sub-D box, and what I'd like to do is what's called a sub-object selection of some edges here in the front view. I'm going to do this by holding Control and Shift down and doing a window selection. Now if you're on Mac, just replace the word Control with Command. You do Command, Shift, and drag a window selection. And then I'll delete. And if I'll go into shaded mode here, I have back face colors on. I'll turn that off at the moment in shaded mode. So you can see we've got our sub D form here. Uh, now the next step is I want to sharpen this bottom rounded edge. I'm going to hold Control Shift and double click and that gets an edge loop sub object selection. Now you could continue that method with Control Shift double click, but you can also use these selection filter icons here. So I could say just give me edges and then double click. You still need to hold down Shift to double click additional edge loops. So it's up to you. Uh, you can turn off your selection filters with this icon. Most of the time, I just like to hold down the keys on the keyboard and do the sub-object selection on the fly like that. So with these four edge loops selected, I'll use the bevel command. And the bevel command lets you insert a number of segments. And you can also decide what the distance is from the edge to the outer segment. Uh, so the edge that you had selected. So that's actually the easiest way to do it. Uh, in this case, I can just type 5 and enter. Now if I use the tab key to toggle into flap mode, I'll just zoom in here. So that 5 unit uh, indication, or 5 millimeters, represents from the edge that I had selected to this outer vertice here. So that distance was 5. I'll use tab to go back into smooth mode. The next thing I'll do is control shift double click to get this edge loop and then use insert edge. Now insert edge has a both sides option which I want to use in this case. So B enter and then I'll just do it by I here. Uh, I don't need to do it numerically. Something like that. Now I don't know exactly what that uh, value was so I'm going to use the reflect command and then X axis and then click on the side that matters, and then enter. And reflect again, so enter. Now Y axis, click on the side that matters, and then enter. And now I've got the same thing on all four corners. And that's the reason why I built the sub D box around zero, so that I can quickly figure out what the reflect plane should be, X and Y. The next thing we'll do is we'll give some thickness to our sink and we're going to use offset sub D. There's some directional arrows and you can flip those up in the command line or you can um, just leave them pointing out, which is what I'm going to do here. And I'll do it at uh, 20 millimeters and solid. The next thing I'll do is come in and sharpen up this top edge. Now we've done uh, bevel already, so I'm going to do a sub-object selection, control shift click of this face, and then control shift double click to get that face loop. Now I'm just going to use the extrude handle on the gumball now to extrude up once and that'll insert an additional edge loop and it uh, as a result sharpens up the top edge on the inside and outside. The next thing we'll do is we'll get some face loop selections here so control shift click and then control shift double click that double click gives me the edge loop for um, what is currently selected. And then I'll just make single clicks for the middle there. 
I'll extrude down with the gumball a couple times like this. And now I want these edges to be sharp all around here. So control shift, double click, and then single clicks for those edges on the corners that are not actually part of a loop. Like that. And with all of those selected, I'll use crease and I'll make those all a sharp edge. Now I'm going to get these edge loop selections and use the gumball to just scale and snap to the center of the gumball just to clean these up a little bit. They were a little bit wonky. And this one, um, I think I'll introduce more edge loops with bevel again, just to control how that looks. The next step will be to add a circular drain. And this is probably the most interesting part of this workflow. I'm going to start with a circle, use a vert O snap there, and then I'll say it's going to be 25 uh, radius, so about two inch diameter there. And, um, and I'm using this just as a guide first uh, for insert point. So insert point, and then you can use near snaps there, or ends or quads or whatever, on the circle to insert those additional edges. And um, those additional edges in the sub D produce these four faces. And I'll delete those. So control shift click and then delete. It's difficult to see inside the sub D right now. So I'll, I'll turn those color uh, back faces back on. And then um, I'm going to scale in 2D. So with my cursor over this handle on the gumball, I'm going to hold down shift and then click and drag to scale 2D. Now with the sub D selected, I'm going to turn on what are called edit points. And these edit points might also be referred to as verts or vertices on the sub D. Now right now I only have four of them. And uh, if I pull them to this circle, it won't really make a perfect circle. Um, or it's never going to be a perfect circle. But it won't be as close as if I add some additional edit points or vertices. So I'm going to use insert point again and use mid snaps right there and then enter. And you have to do this four times. So enter, enter, like that. So I've got now more vertices right around there to pull. Um, next I'm going to use the align command. And align lets me grab these edit points and then enter and I'm going to use the two curve option which is new and then the alignment curve as the circle and there we go and I'm going to turn off my edit points with F11 or escape and uh, I don't need that circle anymore so I'm going to delete that next sub object select these four faces and delete them like that. And I want to use extract SRF now with the copy option and extract these four faces. Okay, I'm going to toggle into flat mode here. So tab, and then I'm going to use the move command, M enter, and move from that vert to there. And then I'm going to select this and this. So shift is held down when I make the second selection. And I'll use join. And for the sub D joined edges, I'll leave it at smooth and then tab to toggle back into smooth mode. Now I'll zoom in here and control shift double click each of these to get both of those edge loops. And I'll use the bridge command. Bridge has a crease option, which I'm going to utilize here so that these edges remain sharp. And now I've got this one closed sub D now. The bottom of the sink is flat. And so to aid the drainage of anything um, in the sink, I'm going to double click to get that control shift, double click to get that edge loop. And I'm just going to drag this down. Let me go into a right view in wireframe so you can actually see the slope that I'm adding here and in front like that. It'll be the same because it's a 
same dimensions, something like that. And then uh, I'll finish it with a bevel here and maybe just do a numeric 10 millimeters. There we go. And that's a soft rectangular form using sub D's in the Rhino 7 work in progress. Thanks for watching.